Not long ago, we've got to try one of the most unusual laptops of recent time, Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. That was a quick look, and I've promised that detailed review won't take long. Well, three months ago is not so long after all, and today let's hit really hard on that. My name is Bogdan, welcome to Techfellas! Here are some opening thoughts. As for design, that is the most spectacular laptop I have ever seen, and I can easily call it the best what Asus designers brought us for the last couple of years. Well, I can also add both ROG phones to this list, but among laptops, Pro Duo is certainly my favorite. Just look at these angular figures, with polishing that emphasizes the shape of the body. For me, even the ventilation cutouts look sexy, I couldn't move back my eyes from it. A lot of attention was paid to subtle details, for example, charging indication is set in an extremely futuristic way. At the front end, there is a long LED strip that is actually unseen by itself, but its light is reflecting from the table. Standing pads here are not just pieces of rubber sandwiched to the bottom with a crazy glue, but clear-cut inserts stylized for a leather that I also find attractive. What I do not fancy at all is that the lid is a hell of a magnet for fingerprints. Besides, all the ports that you will see here are placed seemingly in a random order due to a large number of cooling openings and little of a free space on the body. So in the end we see two USB 3.1 ports, HDMI 2.0 and Type-C that works by Thunderbolt 3 standard, which in total is not much at all, that's why a hub will be a pretty useful thing for owners of Pro Duo. As many other Asus laptops, this one has got special hinges and form of the upper part. When you pick up a lid, the laptop rises its butt about the table. The main point in these movements is to improve the ventilation and make typing process more comfortable by wedging a keyboard. So the name of that witty construction is Ergolift. By the way, it visually makes the black chin below the screen smaller that in reality is much wider than the eyes tell you when you work under the laptop. This technology has its flow. While being on your knees, after a while you will start unpleasantly feeling the pressure from the lead edge and will constantly move the device along the legs. Another drawback, or mostly a possible inconvenience for somebody, might become the location of the keyboard, which is not where we used to see it before, but at the bottom of the workspace. Highly conservative mites may argue that this is not comfortable and that the arms will quickly get tired of typing. However, I can speak by myself, it was actually fine. And if you suddenly feel that something isn't fine and your today's plans include so much typing that even the skin comes off your fingers, the laptop's kit includes a wedge-shaped arm stand. It's made of plastic, weights not much and has a light guide for the same LED strip I told you before. This accessory will definitely take additional space in your bag, but nevertheless, it will solve the problem. Laptop has a full-sized keyboard, although at the first glance it looks incomplete. In fact, with an easy move, a touchpad that takes the place of numpad will return all the useful buttons back. A few words about the keyboard, it's pleasant on typing. The key travel is noticeable, but not significantly, as usual on such devices. There is a backlight with only three levels of brightness, but in the world of Windows laptops it's already worth praying for this. The top row of buttons by default performs the assigned to them special functions, and F1, F12 is called up with the function button. If you don't like it, you can just switch and set the opposite. Here's a couple of highlights. The first one, there is a button for making up screenshots. Pretty useful function, especially if you have no time to edit the picture after grabbing. There are also buttons for switching the cooling system modes, disabling screenpad plus and quickly bowling the window from one screen to another. So to say, now it's about screen number 2. This is an additional screen of the same width as the main one, but half of its height. It can be used as a separate desktop or as an expansion to the main one. In the latter case, it is convenient first of all for working with web pages and lists and secondly for all software which interface consists of blocks. So for instance, our dream editing app looks like this, when the main screen bears mainly the outcoming results and the timeline lives somewhere else. In fact, this layer between the main screen and the keyboard can also be used as a full-fledged second display. We get used to such desktop systems when additional screen lives to the right or left. Now it's at the bottom. It's a sacred place for apps that will check the state of hardware during the game, for written guides while working in some special software, etc. You can come up with more than a dozen cases of using this feature by yourself. When you send the window down, it 
can self-adjust its size so that everything will be in a welcoming shape. Also, the apps that are living on a ScreenPad Plus have their own taskbar. If you have a number of scenarios for using a laptop, for example when video editing, content management and accounting, you can create presets for your needs and run all the software in a ready-made layout. Another thumbs up for such idea. Both screens in Pro Duo are touch sensitive, you can poke them with your fingers as well as with a special stylus made in cooperation with Wacom company. There is a list of default apps specifically adapted for work with stylus, allowing to draw something with much more comfort and not to worry that your hand will spoil the picture or use finger while drawing. Honestly, the idea of using it with the main display actually sucks, but with the screen pad feels quite okay due to its matte coating and the fact that it will not change the angle, unlike the lid. I'm not an artist or a great fan of written notes, but if you're one of them, you should know that for your comfort you can lock the keyboard in one snap so that you don't accidentally bring on something to the screen, and the stylus itself is powered by a battery which should last up to 10 months. It all sounds so great, so maybe summarizing everything? Of course not. Because I've got a bunch of sad news for you too, and the first one is that the main screen here is OLED and the bottom one is IPS, but in truth it should have been contrary wise, because at an angle, exactly LED panels do not lose much brightness and make less color distortions. That could be almost constant in ScreenPad Plus. Did somebody mess something around when making notes before sending everything to the engineering department? As far as we know, there was a drill with stylus and its technology. Next, the same matte finish paired with a horizontal position makes ScreenPad almost completely flooded with glare from lamps when working in an office with ceiling lights that causes some inconveniences. In general, I can't call this implementation ideal, but as it's in fact the first material embodiment, it's just awesome. I sincerely believe that precisely such concept will strike the future. Not the touch strips like in MacBooks, or even more, God please save us from touch panels instead of keyboards. Here's a couple of specs about the main screen. Again, it's OLED with 4K resolution, full coverage of DCI-P3 color range and obviously decent viewing angles. Colors are somewhat more saturated than we used to see on LCD panels, however they are not burning poison that makes my eyes fall on the floor. We could work on this display for as long as on any other 60Hz screen. The only claim or rather nitpicking I have is to strike strange patterns that can be seen when looking directly at the bright picture on the screen. At a working distance this is almost not visible, I stopped paying attention on the first day of use. Other breaking news. <sighs> The speakers here are pleasant, clear and tasty, but they are not the loudest, MacBook has louder, I swear. There is no fingerprint reader in Pro Duo, but it definitely recognizes your face by means of an infrared camera, it works decent and snappy, never failed me yet. <sighs> Let's talk about the beloved hardware. Our model has Intel Core i7 9750H processor inside. There is also Core i9 9980HK version for those who need more balls, cores. But graphics card is one and only NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with 6 gigs of memory. As for the RAM, it is 16 gigs in here, also 1 terabyte SSD. Just for you to know, RAM can be as twice as bigger, but regarding the storage, our version is on the top, you won't get any better out of the box. How good is it in practice? In Premiere Pro you can work without fear of any lags. Especially for tests and purposes, we put together a project which export speed will be compared when testing the power of all our future computers. Here you can find the color correction, transitions, translucent overlays and animated logos. Everything is sketched from the bulldozer, as you probably guessed, but in any case, these layers definitely create a load on the hardware, just what we are waiting for. Now details, processing 25 seconds video fragment by warp stabilizer will take 8 minutes of your precious time, and exporting our test project less than 15 minutes and 5 seconds took 47 minutes. 
For our dearest viewers, we played a couple of games on this machine. In fact, Pro Duo copes with them quite easily, even when playing in 4K resolution. The number of FPS in most cases won't be enough to catch the star. 30, 35 frames, that is the maximum this laptop can give, in some cases even drowning to 20. To be honest, the total picture is really worth sacrificing smoothness for the sake of clarity. If the game allows you to stay a while and take a look at the details of the in-game environment, a top resolution is a setting that you cannot miss here. While playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, I sometimes forgot about slowdowns and was completely immersed into the details of the game world. If the gameplay is all about action, feel free to set Full HD and stop worrying about anything, FPS will almost double at once. In Grid, I saw differences in sharpness between 2160 and 1080p only in cinematics before the race. Frankly, after the green light, you are hardly interested in the barely noticeable ladder on the spoiler of the enemy car in front of you. The brain is busy looking for a way around him and not to trap in worse situation. Call of Duty World War II, as usual, was the hardest durability test for the laptop, but even on UHD it worked without constant drops in performance. There was jamming in frames, but completely on random. With hitting Full HD, the total gameplay experience rose to its maximum. If you have any doubts, we ran all the mentioned games on the top graphics, no exceptions or concessions. Regarding heating and throttling, get ready for exceptionally good news. We were gaming on Pro Duo for half of a day. Surely the cup, notepad and apple that were nearby decently warmed up. The table was also pretty hot, but I couldn't bring the cooling system to despair. It does its job perfectly. What else? Asus didn't forget about an old school trick. The laptop is hot, the keyboard is not, convenient as it is, so throttling is far behind us, we get stable work without drops in performance even after long loads. As for the battery life, knowing that we speak about the laptop on the top graphics with two 4K screens, you can predict in comment section all what I will say next. Having the full charge in high performance mode, it will grant 40 minutes of editing in Premiere Pro. In power saving mode, just surfing the internet or doing a similar loads, you can expect up to 3 to 4 hours of battery life. Summarizing the stuff, people meet new concepts with fear and skepticism quite often, mostly because such products are not perfect at all. Asus and Book Pro Duo certainly met that criticism, however, in spite of the second screen being IPS but not OLED, I I have nothing to say far negative. It deals with all apps on both screens having no optimization issues. Of course, there's something to improve and upgrade, as in all other human-made products. Its starting price is about 3000 bucks, quite hard for me to say shut up and take my money. However, if you already imagined how faster, better and more comfortable it will be having two screens in one laptop, I'll say it's definitely worth spending such amount of money. So if you decided to spend some, I will I'll leave a couple of links to internet stores where you can buy Asus and Book Pro Duo in the description box below. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!